Hey, what's happening, everyone? Johnny Man here, and welcome back to my Championship Manager 2001 2000 save with Manchester City. So, we have eight games left to go in the season, which means we'll split the two episodes now between four games apiece. So, first of all, we got Fulham, Everton, Leicester, and West Bromwich Albion, all very winnable games, followed by Southampton, Ipswich, Arsenal, and then, of course, Leeds in the next episode. So, going into today's one, uh, form hasn't been very good. Let's take a look at the last run of form. As you can see, the last episode. Episode. Um, didn't go really well as planned, conceding far, far too many goals, and uh, that's obviously a little bit of a concern. We do, we do play a very attacking formation, but uh, there's no excuse for defensive lapses like that. So, let's try and find... Let's see what's going wrong here. Let's see what's going wrong. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's really identify what the problem is with the squad itself. Um... Obviously, a lot of it's going to come down to the fact they are young players and they are still growing and developing. Like, Wisp is only 22 years old. Um, Welsh just came into the team this season. He's 19. Obviously, signed him just a few uh, months ago and he's really playing the whole midfield role, which apparently is his best spot. So, I'm going to persist with that. Hagen, um, up and down all season. Prime, decent, decent rating, but pretty much up and down. Uh, Rasberg. He's pretty much done, I think. Honestly, I don't really think he's going to improve all that much. He's only 20 years old. So uh, we got Mike Duff as well, 25, but he's too good to drop right now. Jamie Victory, um, perhaps, is the weak link there. Um, Chertis, he's been, obviously, I mean, he considered 60 goals and 31 appearances, but it's not all down to him. He's, he's done, generally speaking, all right this season. But then again, he's also 25 years old. He's going to get a little bit better uh, before he's going. So Corneliuson, maybe it's our rotation players. It could well be our rotation players coming in when players are injured and things like that. I mean, we're not, I haven't got a lot of depth back there. Uh, we signed Patrick Eriksson Olsen, who has been kind of so-so since he joined. I mean, it was for £210,000. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, then other players like Carr hasn't made any kind of an impact. Uh, Silver Bow has been very, very average to say the least. Um, Paul Ritchie obviously decided to move on from after signing Olsen. So, I mean, it could well be a depth issue at the back. It also could be a tactical issue. Let's take a look at those tactics real quick. Um, so this is how I line up. Now, I usually have pressing off. But part of me thinks that it works better when pressing is on in this formation. I'm going to stick with the formation. I don't think I'm going to change the formation. I'm very happy playing a 4-1-3-2. I've always have done and I always will do. I'm as stubborn as I come when it comes to tactics and formation and uh, that that being that being, that being uh, in mind, I'm going to stick with it. So, anyway, without further ado, let's try and move on here. So, it's very tough to identify what's wrong with the side. It could be we're not scoring enough goals, getting forward enough, putting too much pressure on the back line, but at the same time, it just could be individual errors at the back. Just kind of easing into the Premier League because obviously we just got promoted last season so this is our first season in the Premier League and you know it just could be a factor of nerves young players still growing things like that it could be a chemistry issue oh for fuck's sake don't oh don't mm. uh, this, is, this is this is so annoying all right I'm gonna try and sign uh, Maxime Sagarko again I've had two work permits denied for him um, all right, indispensable to the club. All right, so I can offer a bit more this time. And the gentleman informed me that if I do over 33,500, it should be accepted. So let's give it a shot. I'll max out his money. It should be accepted by him. I don't think it won't be. Here I am talking about defense and about to sign a striker. That's very, very typical for me. Very, very typical indeed. All right, so he accepted and moved to me. Um, can obviously can I do, uh, renegotiate. Why would I renegotiate? Why would, I, why would I feel the need back? Okay, so proposed transfer to Dynamo Minx to Man City cannot proceed at the current time due to the English transfer deadline. Well, that's bullshit, isn't it? I mean, I can't sign the guy, and you can't just play for me. In the, you can't just join in the summer. That's not a. That's not an option. Can't just make that happen. I'm gonna go with it again. All right. All right, so how much PSG are trying to sign this guy for? I got a bit accepted. I mean, you know how good he is, a son NDI, and Dyer. So let's put it in 5.5. It's probably going to be accepted, I would imagine. He's a good player. Um, all right, so Chiotis, we're going to start in goal uh, for the game against Fulham today. Uh, left back, we go with Jimmy Victory. Right back, Mike Duff. Center halves. Um, we'll go Olsen and Risp. 
today instead of Hagen. Uh, Holden midfielder, Welsh. In fact, I haven't checked if you've got any injuries, any injuries. Nah, everyone looks pretty good to me. All right, midfield. Um, this has been a problem all season two, inconsistency midfield. Uh, I'm going to do a Pedrag. Uh, Jordovic, uh, just because he hasn't got many years left in him, he's only he's a 30 years old, he's got a couple years left in him, that's a bit harsh really, um, who's going to partner him though, who's been who's been the better option out of the, out of the four or five players you really have to pick from uh, gotta go with London gotta go Jonas London here, and we'll do, uh, we'll do Tom Madero and uh, Peter Crouch has been very poorly, you see what, let's give Tonton Zula Makoko a go up top He's still young, he's still growing, the uh, exposure to the first team will definitely help that development. So, on the bench, Carl and Nash, obviously. Uh, we'll do Hagen on the bench, then we'll do, I don't know, Eriksson, Kolstrom, and Crouch, I guess. Uh, Eriksson, he's good, but uh, let's put Barsom on the bench instead. Okay, so, anyway, without further mumbling, uh, let's get today's action. Right, so, uh, Fulham, Edwin van der Sar, 32. Uh, in their team, Steve Malbranc, Marley, Steve Marley, Luis. They got they had a very talented, technically gifted team. This is obviously when money was being poured into the club uh, by the owner of Harrods. I honestly, the name slips the mind right now. I'm not quite sure. Can't remember who it was. Probably come to me like two hours from now. Probably wake up in bed going, "Oh, it was this this that guy, that guy." Yeah, but you know, that's just the way it goes. Anyway, so one 0 up. Mark Kerr getting another goal. Good to see that. Marco has had a brilliant season, really. He had a slow start, but now he's kind of coming to his own. We expected that to happen anyway. Um, he's a really, very, really, really, really good player. If you uh, play championship manager, I can't recommend this guy enough. He's he's effective, he's cheap, he's just, uh, he's just a fantastic player. But anyway, first off, gone. Done very well so far. The end of one shot, we had six. So the pressing maybe has... Maybe the pressing change in the tactic has worked a little bit in our favour today. And, of course, as soon as I mentioned that Steve Marley gets a goal back. And it's a penalty. And Welsh steps up the penalty. Not Tomadeira, not Jonas London. Welsh. 19-year-old kid to Sunderland Liverpool. Still got growing to do. Let's give him the penalty. Yep, why not? That makes absolute sense. It's my fault, really, for not setting the penalty takers. I just figured that, honestly, the players have a bit more common sense than that. But, anyway. So, 1-1. One, one. Should be 2-1. But we'll pretend that... Penalty miss didn't happen. Um, let's be on Colstrom as well. All right, cool. All right, Mark Kerr gets in this and 10th goal of the season for Mark Kerr. I've actually looked at who the top scores of the season. Uh, Louis Saha, for fuck's sake, Louis Saha. 88 minutes on the clock. See, defending again, let us down here today. Then he had two shots on target all game long. Chodas got a 5 out of 10. So not a good performance, was it? Nope. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay. But then again, that's been a common trend this season. So a Sani NDI offer has been accepted, as you would expect. And I'm going to offer him the max deal I possibly can to get a work permit done for him. All right, so there you go. Okay, so for some reason, they'll allow a Sani to sign in the summer. 5.5 million, by the way, is a bargain for this guy. He is an absolute beast at the back. So we'll add him to the cl club. He'll join the 3rd of June, 2023. So, all right, 2003, 2023, 2003. What am I on? What am I on? Okay. Um, moving forward. Justin Jorsen. Okay, so this is the guy that I'm thinking about signing as well. If I get him on the cheap. Probably not going to happen, but it's something I'm considering. Uh, out of the couple of players to the shortlist as well. Where are they? Where are they? That I was... Uh, someone got recommended to. Is that back so No, I thought it was almost back for a second. Got excited. I want to get me some Kennedy back as CL glue for this save. Even if he ends up not being very good, I still want to sign him. Um, all right, Philippe Mexis. Uh, can, someone, can someone scout him? I want to get a full report. Even if I have to pay £8 million, I might want to sign him. Fernando Torres. Obviously, you know what quality player he turns into. Scout him. Get the full report. Uh, Richard Sadlier, that was one of the ones I thought about maybe bringing in. Now, he may not seem much on paper, but he always seems to get lots of goals. He's a target man, as you can see from his strength, his jumping ability, his heading ability. Um, he's a target man. So he can he, he can probably partner Tomadero pretty effectively. I wouldn't put him and Crouch up top, but he could be a cheap option. In the f could be a cheap option if we're looking for an extra striker in the summer, which I, silently, I am kind of looking for an extra striker in the summer. Um, Michael Dawson is crap. Um, who was also looking? Oh, David Pritton. That's who I was looking at. He signed for Ipswich early in the season for 8.25 million, which means I'm not going to be able to get him now. But 3.3 million. 
is value that. So what I'm going to do is add him to my shortlist, keep a close eye on him because he can turn into a really, really good um, defender and holding midfielder as well. Again, I'm just about um, acquiring quality of talent right now um, more than fits, honestly. And that's probably the wrong, wrong way to do it, but I'm just trying to just trying to have some fun with this, you know, because I've played the game seriously many, 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 many times before. Um, so I'm just trying to have some fun, bringing in quality talent and just a bit of just try and get some of the legends back in, really. Um, all right, so should I drop Chiotis? He isn't playing well, has he? Don't really want to because he is really our best keeper in the squad. Um, Carlo Nash. Every time you've played, you've done well. So you know what, Carlo? You can have a go today. Bit of a dramatic move, perhaps. We're up against Everton. Um, fucking Duncan Ferguson and Kevin Campbell up top. Thomas Gravidson went on to play for Real Madrid. You're not quality here. It's David Rear, Alan Stubbs, Naismith. Mark Poom in goal. I completely forgot about Mark Poom. Derby goalkeeper. He was a good shot stopper. Tobadira gets a goal, and so did Tolon Solo Makoko. Missed that one. So 2 0 up, 20 minutes in. Things are going very well. But that's usually how things go for us, and then it collapses. Kind of at the start of my week, it goes very, very well, and then it just collapses by the end of it. So, yeah, anyway. um, All right, so as long as we don't concede a goal before halftime, of course, as soon as I mentioned, they're probably going to score now, um, we should be in a good position here to get a win. And the vital one it is, it'll be our first win in like five games. And fucking Mark Kerr gets sent off. Idiots. All right, so left this in a lurch a little bit. Let's take off Tantan Zulimakoko, despite how well he's playing today. That's his fifth goal of the season. Him, congratulations. Uh, Kalshan will come on. All right, so... That put the, 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 this game that makes it a little bit interesting. This game doesn't it now? Obviously, not quite half time. We have to hold on to half time and then we'll take it from there. All right, so hold on to half time. Everything's going okay. I'm going to keep things as they are for now. Obviously, I do have options on the bench. Um, as far as midfielder, for fuck's sake, Campbell Kevin Campbell gets a goal. I'm not a forest striker. All right, 61 minutes on the clock. I'd like to maybe get a third goal somehow, some way. I've got a funny feeling that Everton are going to get back in this. They're going to score here, I think. As a manager, I should probably do something about that, right? Yeah, let's do something about that. All right, so. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so. Let's, let's bring off Pedrak, uh, Jovic, and let's bring on Hagen. And let's move Welsh into the center of midfield, but Hagen just in front there. And we'll also have Hagen drop back in to create kind of a back five kind of scenario. So we'll go with that. Only five minutes left to go in this game. Let's see if we can hold on to a vital victory. Come on, boys, just a few minutes more. Come on, hold on, hold on. All right, come on, 93 minutes. Come on, ref, that's had enough. There you go, full-time whistle. Hold on for victory, so good, good stuff indeed. 2-0 uh, up. Obviously, that red card kind of left us in the lurch a little bit, but we held on to um, a win, a vital win too, because you know what? That keeps us in touch now between um, us and the kind of single-digit fate. If we, if we get 8th or ninth, I'm actually going to be pretty happy um, with that. So, anyway, I'm going to appeal the ban. It's not going to work because you never ever win appeals in this game. It's, that's been the issue since day one. It's kind of pointless, really. I don't know why I even bother. But anyway, um, apparently Tomodou was chosen for the English Players Premier League Select Team of the Year. Now, he was on the bench. I'm expecting to see a lot more of our players in this squad next season. But very proud of Tomodou to be in there. Hasn't scored as many goals as I thought he was. Uh, 18 goals. I don't know how many of you guys predicted how many goals he scored. Obviously, got a few games left of the season, so he may get a few more yet. Um, but obviously, I predicted he score a lot more. I think I predicted he would get... 32 I think um, he's only got 18 so obviously he hasn't really lifted up to my expectation but then again neither has a team to be honest with you let's go to our reserve real quick so good news is Frederick Lagomir has successfully retrained as a centre attack and centre midfielder now on a forward centre too so he will get some looks at the end of the season um, obviously he's a very very forward thinking player he's got a lot of really good qualities about him um, I'll see how he fits in the squad. Give him a bit of a go. See how he does. Because he hasn't done well for the reserves. Um, all right. So the offer has been accepted. All right. So what we'll do is we'll just we'll put indispensable. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll offer 34500 And it should be accepted without a problem. Now, if you add Maxim um, Sagoko and obviously we've just agreed to sign Asani and Dyer, um, 
that will be obviously a big, big boost over the summer. Now, here's something interesting. So, Man City have been invited to apply for the one English place in Intertoto Cup. I honestly, hand on heart, forgot the Intertoto Cup ever existed. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm going to apply for that because it's a way into Europe. I'd love to play in Europe, but I don't think I'm going to get it. There's a lot of teams above us that will probably apply. Um, I forgot that all was. I, got, I forgot, kind of forgot that Europe was an option. It's like, oh, do you want to play in Europe? Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. It's kind of an invitation. Very, very weird. Anyway, so um, up against Leicester today, and then West Brom, two more, two more episodes. Sorry, two more games in this episode. Can't talk today. Carl and Ash are going to keep your spot because you only see one goal last time out. Um, Mark, uh, you will be suspended in the upcoming days. Of course, you want to be Arsenal when you not live in Newcastle. Um, Lagomir is available. So I could give him a run out at some point. So yeah, we're going to do that. All right, so Lagomir going to be on the bench uh, instead of Barsom, who has been okay this season. Not as good as last season. Um, okay, though. But it's a bit of a step up from Division 1 to the Premier League. So a bit of a lapse is expected. Am I going to hold it against him? He's definitely going to be in my plans for next season. Uh, early goal. Uh, Matthias, that apparently was poor positioning from Carl Nash that caused that goal. So that's duly noted. And Chiotis will likely return to the team next week. All right. Clint Mattis, Clint Mattis, yeah, an American striker, wasn't he American? Yeah, he was, okay. Uh, who else do they have? Paula Vanaza, Tim Flowers in goal, that's a bit of a goalkeeping legend. Again, I was, I'm actually a goalkeeper in real life, so I spent a lot of time studying, watching goalkeepers and paying attention to who was number one, number two choice in the Premier League all my life. Um, so I will be very familiar with a lot of goalkeepers and their style of goalkeeping. Um, and Tim Flowers, was, I was definitely a huge, huge fan on. Um, not just because he played for Southampton in the early days, but just because he was a very, very solid professional. Good guy, good player. And uh, honestly, he was unlikely not to win more caps for England, but you know, a certain goalkeeper by the name of David Seaman kind of stood in his way for most of his career. So... Yeah, it was unfortunate, but that happened. All right, so 60 minutes in, nothing's really gone our way. Um, apart from that, that was the first thing that's gone our way. Matt Elliott getting a goal in the 60th minute for us. Um, let's make a change. Let's go and go for this win. Oh, there you go. Tonton Zuna Makoko right on cue gets a goal, puts 2 1 up. So let's look, see if we can make some changes. Colin Nash has bounced back a little bit to a 7 out of 10, which is pleasing. So I am going to be on Karlstrom. And I'm also going to bring on Peter Crouch. And I'm also going to bring on Frederick Lagomir for his debut today. Let's see what he can do. He's going to come on for London and play centre midfielder. Not really a centre midfielder. He's going to learn the, how to learn how to play the trade. And let's see if he can make an impact today. All right, so come on, boys. 12 minutes left to go in this game. Let's get, uh, let's get another victory. Two victories in a row will be excellent. All right, come on, boys. There he is, Peter Crouch getting his fifth goal of the season. Hasn't really done it for me since joining the club. He signed for 5.5 million. Uh, his fifth goal in 15. One in three. It's not bad. It's not bad for the Premier League, but it's not great either. There are better strikers out there than Peter Crouch. And, and he's just kind of a stopgap signing. And for the most part, he's done okay. And I'm sure he's only 22 as well. He might get better over the summer. But anyway, good win there. 3-1 victory over Leicester City. We go above them now in the table. And it keeps us our push for the uh, single-digit finish. Um, okay, so perfect. All right, and we're going to sign Maxim um, Sagolko in the summer. So there you go. We've got two huge, huge signings in the summer that's going to help us next season. Maxim Sagolko is going to play next to Tomadira. That is a that is the championship manager dream right there. Um, if you had Cherno Samba on the bench, then it would just complete it. But we're not going to get Cherno Samba. He's off. He's playing into Milan, and there's no way we can convince him to move. Um, so I did think about signing who was it? Alex Ray Alex Ray not Alex it's not Alex Ray it's um who is it who is it who is it I know Justin Jocelyn is on my radar as well but I don't want to pay two million pounds for him um or more than that it's going to be um who is it they have someone that plays and that's really 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 good an attacking midfielder maybe he hasn't played from yet maybe I'm thinking in future like in real life that happened I'm thinking that's the case. All right, well, forget it. We'll move on. Um, we'll take a look at the relegated squads in the future to get some bargains, at least rotation players. All right, Tonton Zilla Makoko player is going to be caught up by Ghana. He's doing very well since coming into the team. He's done well. He's done very, very well indeed. He will definitely compete for a spot next season uh, up top. But he has Maxim, Zazelko, and Peter Crouch to fight with. So it's going to be pretty, very difficult for him. So West Brom, rock bottom of the table, already confirmed relegated, only got 16 points all season, only two wins, so you know what that means. It means they're going to win. Um, let's see who they have that's uh, frightening. Fucking Rod Wallace, Jesus, Rod Wallace. 
As I say, he must be getting on. He's only 33. Um, Jason Roberts. Tobias Lindroff. Looks pretty talented player, doesn't he? Yeah, but not kind of... Oh, don't want to overpay to get him on board. Sigurdsson? Nah. Forsberg? Nah. All right, yeah, but so not much to be scared of. I'm going to be honest with you. So I said, did say Chardis will return today. He's going to return instead of Carlo Nash. Um, apart from that, we'll probably keep the same team, shouldn't we really? I mean, it's what, it's a couple wins in a row now. Um, so let's keep the same team. And this will be the last game of the episode. So uh, let's finish it with a win. Let's finish it with three wins in a row. All right. Uh, so far, everything's gone pretty well last couple of the games. Honestly, uh, defensively, have improved. I haven't really done much. I've just changed from just basically add press into the side. That's kind of made the difference. And I'm very excited about getting Asani and I on board. He's going to be a big, big player for us at the back. And obviously, um, another season grown for Mark Kerr, Tonton Zulu Makoko getting a goal today. He's starting to find form at the end of the season. That's his seventh goal now. Um... And obviously signing Maxim Sizoko in the summer. And I mean, there's exciting times ahead, definitely, definitely. We just got to make sure we see through the season in solid fashion, kind of build momentum for next season. That's the that's the ultimate aim. And obviously, um, there's going to be a little bit of a gap between uh, this season and next season. Um, just to give you, just uh, because the Foot Manager 2018 is going to be coming out. I think when this episode's air, the Foot Manager 2018 could be out in the beta form. Let me check that. Yeah, actually, uh, nope, nope, nope. This is going to be the day day before Foot Manager 2018 comes out. So, just gave you a little backdoor information there. Um, geez, I didn't even know it's the time on the game itself. 77 minutes. Make some changes. Uh, but anyway, as I was mentioning, back to back to my topic before I got easily distracted. Um, essentially, um, this is going to be uh, it's going to continue the same format. Okay, a um, in the future, it's going to be every other day. This series alongside FIFA, that's going to be every other day. And then, obviously, Foot Manager 2018 is going to be every day. So, there you go. Pretty simple. Um, but there will be a break between this season and next season. Um, I'm not going to quit the series at all. I want to continue the series because I'm having too much fun with it. having too much fun with you, um, the, the uh, viewer, and uh, in, in the community, enjoying it too much. It's just a fantastic. I, I forgot how much I love this game until I start playing a real series again. And, obviously, I'm, enjoy I'm really enjoying doing it for the channel. Um, so, there won't be the end of it. It's, you may see, like, maybe a week in between this season and next season just because I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have to go through uh, the summer on the game itself and I want to give you guys time to recommend more signings things like that as well I'm going to take that into consideration and then um, I'll I'll start more episodes then so anyway um, so basically the idea is going to finish off the second season and there'll maybe like a week break in between the start of the second end of the second season and start of the third season so anyway stop the game let's have this little chat uh, let's bring on Crouchy for Madeira Got his 19th goal of the season. Lagomir is going to come on as well for the last 12 minutes. Winning 3-0 very, very comfortably, so it's uh, game's beyond doubt. It's kind of pointless. I got to put on uh, Carlo Nash up top. Wouldn't make a difference. All right, so... All right, full-time whistle. Uh, got man of the match. Mark Kerr got man of the match. Another good performance for him. Love goal of the season from midfield. Making it look all too easy in indeed all right so what we'll do is we'll get to the eve of the next fixture and then we'll call this episode quits um because i think there's an international break oh girl for that we finally got report on fernando torres and boy is he a striker 2.5 million pounds for him though we all know what kind of player he turns into for liverpool we're going to forget that the chelsea days ever existed uh, and judge him solely on how well he did for liverpool in the first couple of seasons he was it was world class he was unstoppable on his day um so he's a player I'm considering bringing in. Um, what else? What else can we talk about for this episode? Because I want to try and make it up the time because I'm only doing four episodes rather than five. Um, Scotland lost to Greece. So it's not really a surprise there, is it? Um, Colin Cameron. That's the guy I'm thinking of. He went on. Yeah, he played for Wolves and he went to Blackburn. I knew he was at Wolves. Colin Cameron. This is midfield I think about bringing in um, next season. It all depends on price, though, because he's valid at 4.4. He was just signed for 6.75. So I'm thinking about bringing him in next season, and he might be able to do a pretty good job for me in the middle of the park. Um, who else was I looking at? It was another Scottish player. It wasn't Johnson. Who was it? Dick Yamko, maybe. It's a good player. All right, we're getting, uh, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. I'll think of it. Add it to my shortlist, and then that'll be that. So, 
anyway uh, that's gonna wrap up the episode i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did remember to hit like uh, if you want to see more videos by me in the future uh please hit subscribe and obviously i've just found out this video will be the last video before foot manager 2018 airs the next day um on friday the 27th i'm excited i'm super excited i know you guys are too i'm sure of it um so yeah if you want to see more videos of me doing foot manager 2018 please stay subscribed uh if you have any recommendations on players i have to sign for the summer please let me know ahead of time so I can plan for that and try and bring them in. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next part. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.